Welcome to the world of animal allies, the doctors, volunteers, pet owners and other surprising visitors who are out there making a difference. In the UK, animal doctors are kept busy looking after homeless ducklings and a limping dog. While in Animal Helpers, a cheeky Australian Corella keeps the elderly young at heart. This week's How To has all the tips on keeping ferrets. And in Animal World, the Madagascan Chameleon has dinner. These ducklings were found cold and abandoned in a supermarket car park in Hampshire, England. For now, they're being taken care of by the staff at the Cedar Veterinary Clinic. And they were soaking wet, and two of them were nearly had it. So just put them under the heat lamp. Fairly now. Yeah. Although the ducklings are able to walk and feed themselves, they need their mother to teach them survival skills if they are to be released back into the wild. But the chance of finding their mother is slim. Okay, they look pretty yeah. fit. They just need some looking after, That's right? right? Okay, we'll do yeah. that then. Yeah. The ducklings are kept safe and warm in an incubator, while the veterinary staff decide what to do with their new patients. Meanwhile, another patient, Thunder the Labrador, has had an unlucky run. First, it was an ear infection. Then he had a tumour removed from his nose. And his luck keeps getting worse. Thunder has been limping for over a month, and Dr. Martin Andrews is about to take a closer look. He doesn't like what he sees, and decides to immediately go ahead with exploratory surgery. It looks like that's healed up quite. Was that the one with the well. great big slush in it? The anaesthetic boy. takes seconds to work. On inspecting Thunder's tongue, Doc Andrews discovers a lump. There's something appearing under his tongue now as well. But the main concern right now is the dog's limp and making sure he breathes easily during surgery. So he's been lame for about a month and has had this non-healing wound on his pad. So we need to investigate that. Possibly you may have something in there, but it's equally possible that there's something a little bit more involved going on here and we might have to just sample it to see what's actually happening in the tissue. There's something else in his stomach as well. We're finding all sorts of lumps and bumps on this dog. That doesn't look very typical of a foreign body, really. It looks almost as if there's something actually growing from the tissue underneath the pad, so in fact it may be an abnormal growth that's pushing through there. It doesn't look quite right for just a wound. You can see where the dog's been licking at it quite a lot. Though the growth can be easily removed, Doc Andrews is puzzled by the cause, and so will send a sample of it off for laboratory testing. Okay. Right, yeah. Liquid nitrogen is used to remove any minute part of the growth the vet may have missed. The nitrogen is perfect for animal operations such as thunders because it not only destroys any stray cells, but it also seals up the wound, leaving no need for stitches. I mean, he's obviously got various lumps and bumps in places. I can't see an obvious link between the type of tumour that he had on his nose and what he has on his foot. While Doc Andrews has removed the source of thunders limp, the Labrador is not out of the woods yet. There are other lumps to contend Friday, with. So the doctor covered. calls Thunder's anxious owner to give him the news. Hello, Mrs Andrews. Hello, it's Martin Andrews here from, from the vets. Um, Thunder, I'm, I'm just dealing with him now. All, all, all is OK. I've just dealt with his foot. Um, t two small things that I noticed while he was out, really. One is um, underneath the, well, the back of his tongue, uh, underneath, he's got a little sort of warty thing. The other thing is he's got a little lump in his groin. Um, well, I think probably I just obviously wanted to check with you, but I think my advice would be, while well, we've got him here, that we take that one off as well, really. Um, and I think in view of the problems he's had, it may be worth sending that off for analysis, really. Do they? 
Right. As for the lost ducklings, the vet nurse is on the hunt for a new home at a wildlife rescue centre. Uh, there was no mother around, evidently, and um, Martin's had a look at them and they all seem to be relatively fit. I don't know whether you're interested in um, taking them from hands. The centre is unable to adopt the ducklings, okay. but offers a suggestion. Yes, of course we can, yes. That's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? The decision is made to return the ducklings to a pond near the location where they were found. No time is wasted. The longer they're away, the less likely it is they will find their mother. In Animal Doctors Part 2, Doc Andrews continues his search to find out what's troubling Thunder. And will the ducklings be reunited with their mother? Don't be alarmed. Ida Gallup really does love her feathered friend Jack. Ida became the white Corella's foster mother when Jack was only a few weeks old. Since then, they've shared an incredible bond over 30 years. Ida's kept pets all her life, but Jack is no ordinary bird. To Ida, he's almost human. Yeah. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Oh, okay. Jack loves to chat and entertain, performing up to 40 different tricks. Well, he's always done little things. He's opened the door and come in right from the word go. But I didn't know that he was special or anything like that. I didn't know anything about birds or their brilliance. But Jack has displayed, oh, daily whenever we are doing little things that he is using his brain you almost can see the little eye trying to think of how can I do this the pair has performed at more than 70 events in the past year and their act has become a big hit today Ida is taking Jack to entertain at an adult daycare center Generally it doesn't phase Jack where we go. He's just happy to be a part of whatever and really if ever lets me down. It's the fourth time this audience has called the pair back. Loving the limelight, Jack never fails to deliver. Sometimes I get a little concerned to think, goodness, what if Jack's not going to do it today? So I just hope the goodness that he never lets me down. Actually I threaten him with a with dreadful things if he does let me down, but he's never experienced those dreadful things, have you, sweetheart? Hey, what do you reckon? Coming now? Come on. Now you've got to come and do a job first. Hello, Ida. Hello, Jack. Hi, Jenny. Come in. Good How to are see you. you. Right. Thank you. Hello, Cotton. Another kiss. Good boy. Oh, it's a good Very boy. good. As you know, we really enjoy coming because it gives Jack an outing and he's able to then just show the world what a bird can do. We just go through some of his little uh, little things. Here. Here. Here, darling. Good boy. Very good boy. Thank you. Good boy. Let's finish with it now. Get rid of it. Oh. Good. That's good boy. No, no, no. Nicely, please. Now listen. Start again. That's all right. That's all right. Put it back. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. What about this one? Put it like back. any couple, the pair sometimes back, disagree. Back. Jack has a mind of his own good. and doesn't always good do what boy. Ida would like. Very good. Very good. Over. Over. You'll get dizzy. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. As well as keeping his fans happy, he helps keep Ida active. Do you want a drink? It's all right, sweetheart. Have a drink. He gives me a purpose for the day because I've got to get up. 
I've got to take him out of his cage. I've got to make sure he's got water and feed for the day. So he actually gives me a purpose. And when I take him to these places, people thank me for coming, but really and truly, I'm thanking them because I have got a purpose. Isn't that so, sweetheart? Hey, you gonna say yes or no? That's all right. Thank Some you. Corellas live well into their 80s, and hopefully Ida and Jack will be together for many years to come. Ever thought of having a ferret in the family? They're intelligent, playful and can make wonderful pets. But like any special creature, they have special the needs. Animal Allies Guide to Caring for a Pet Ferret. Ferrets love to eat small meals several times a day and they have a quick metabolism. But they need to be carefully fed, as ferret expert Shirley Hewitt explains. Ferrets require a high animal protein, high fat diet, so fresh raw meat is an important part of their diet, but not enough on its own, so it needs to be supplemented with a very high quality cat biscuit, and of course always lots of fresh clean water. All animals have some kind of scent, but the ferrets is quite distinct. The more you wash them, the stronger the smell. This is simply because when you wash them, you wash away the oils from their skin, which get replaced, and they smell stronger than before. And providing their bedding is kept clean and changed regularly, once they're sterilised, they don't smell. You know when a ferret needs to go to the toilet because it will walk backwards into a corner. Make sure they have kitty litter or newspapers in every corner, but let them have the run of the house. We're looking at an animal that's as intelligent as a cat or a dog and twice as mischievous and needs interaction with a family. And my pet hate is when people get a ferret and put it in a cage in the backyard. That's very heartbreaking. <laughs> Outside, Shirley says ferret proofing your garden is a must. That means strong, high fencing and making sure there is nothing the ferrets can climb on to escape. Ferrets all should be named Houdini because they're the best escape artists in the business. So the fencing for their little yard here is all dug underground. At least 50 centimetres in most places, it's, it's much deeper than that. All that escaping leaves a ferret pretty tired. They sleep up to 18 hours a day. So before rushing off to the pet shop to buy a ferret, take a look at this week's Animal Allies how-to. Supplement your ferret's raw meat diet with high quality dry cat food. The less you bathe your ferret, the less it smells. Ferrets need a playful and stimulating environment to live in. Ferret proof your house and backyard. Magical, even mystical, colourful yet camouflaged. This is the amazing chameleon. This creature spends most of every day motionless, in the trees, waiting patiently for unsuspecting prey. The reptile can balance for hours, gripping with its surprisingly agile claws. Once a chameleon identifies its target, it creeps closer, ever closer, almost in a single fluid motion. Little wonder their Greek name means crawling lion. The chameleon's divided toes, much like hands in mittens, help it inch its way through the branches. Once they've locked onto their prey, these remarkable reptiles seldom miss. But as stealthy as they are in the trees, they're lost on the ground. 
they spend little time there. Clumsy and easily caught, they would be eaten by predators. The chameleon's most amazing feature is its eyes. They are normally independently rotating. That means chameleons can literally look in two directions at once. It can search for prey while still keeping one eye out for predators. But once the chameleon spots its dinner, both eyes focus in and its long sticky tongue goes in for the kill. This is the world's fourth largest island, Madagascar, off the southern African coast. It's home to a rich diversity of wildlife and up to 10,000 species of plant life. Almost half the world's species of chameleon live here and 58 of those are unique to Madagascar. It's the largest community and the most diverse. But Madagascar is a paradise in peril. It's one of the poorest countries in the world and its natural environment is being destroyed so that its people can survive. With such pressing problems, saving creatures like the chameleon might seem an odd priority. But it does make sense. According to experts like Matthew Hatchwell from the Wildlife Conservation Society at the Bronx Zoo in New York. A country like Madagascar is only going to be able to afford to manage its protected areas if there are some revenues coming in from, from protected areas through, through tourism. Uh, just the name of Madagascar overseas has still got this mystique which uh, I, I think attracts a lot of people to come here. Um, but it would be wrong to think that the protected areas can exist um, on the strength of ecotourism alone. Chameleons are perhaps best known for their ability to change colour. But contrary to popular belief, they don't use this remarkable talent for camouflage. It's more complicated than that. Sometimes a colour change can reflect the health of the reptile. A lighter shade often indicates the chameleon is sick. Chameleons also change colour depending on their emotional state. And they use colour changes to keep cooler or warmer. Lighter shades reflect heat, darker colours absorb it. Another remarkable thing about the chameleon is its tongue. For a start, a chameleon's tongue is at least as long as its body, sometimes longer. The chameleon uses its tongue with astonishing accuracy. First, both eyes lock onto its prey. This is taking aim. Next, the bulbous sticky tip is protruded in a process called sampling. Then the tongue is shot out and the prey is caught. And finally, the prey is chewed vigorously and swallowed. And that's dinner. Back at the Hampshire Veterinary Clinic, Thunder the Labrador is facing yet another challenge. He has already had one lump removed from his foot and his owner has agreed to let Dr. Andrews remove two other new growths while the dog is still on the operating table. As Thunder is getting on in years, it makes sense to remove the growths now rather than put him through a second anaesthetic. Doc Andrews fears Thunder's lumps may be cancerous. By sending all three growths for laboratory testing, he hopes the cause of them will be revealed. It's probably just a pack of labour, but I think we'll get this dog done dog as, a, as a package. It's got so many lumps. A papilloma is a surface skin tumour caused by a viral infection. It's not usually a problem, but Good. considering Thunder's Thanks. track record, Dr Andrews is sending it in for testing, just to make sure. Thunder is taken back to the kennels for some much-needed R&R. There, our animal doctors will be able to keep him under strict observation. Now, it's time to find these ducklings' mother. They have been taken to the nearest pond to where they were found. Hopefully their birth mother is close by. Any other mother duck will reject the ducklings. She will drive them away or even try to attack them. The 
ducklings eagerly take to the water. There is nothing more for the nurse to do than wait and see. In a matter of moments, their passage is blocked by threatening swans. Finally, it is smooth sailing as they reunite with their mother. That is amazing. <laughs> At the clinic, Thunder's worried owner has arrived to find out when his best mate can go home. Um, restricted exercise. Um, you can have a light meal this evening, okay? His antibiotics start tomorrow, one okay. twice a day, and he's got some painkillers to start tomorrow, one twice a day. Okay. Then it's just a waiting game until the test results come back. But whatever the outcome, Thunder's last years will be spent with a loving and supportive family. In the next programme, the world of animal allies continues with a look at the exotic alpaca and finds out why it's becoming a favourite with English farmers. And we show you how to be your puppy's best friend.